Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I am back with my March book haul part one. So the books that publishers have sent me and some books that I bought myself. Less than usual because as you will see on Wednesday's video when I do my one in one out and sorting out the shelves, things have got a bit bonkers already and we're only like three months into the year. So we're, yeah, reining myself in. First up, three books that I actually asked for from the lovely folk at Pam McMillan slash Picador slash Mantle. And the first of those is Blackwater sister by Zen Chu which sounds really 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 interesting. This is all about Jasmine who is a young woman who's uh, graduated in America but she's having to go home to Malaysia for various different reasons and on her way or possibly just before she heads back she starts to hear a voice in her head and that voice turns out to be Ah Ma, her late grandmother. And her grandmother, unbeknownst to Jasmine, had made a pact that she would uh, have revenge on behalf of a deity slash goddess called Blackwater Sister and on a very powerful businessman who um, tricked her. And uh, yeah, we follow on from there. And I think this is going to be brilliant because it's kind of all of the old myths and legends and gods and goddesses and ghosts brought into present day, which I just love. So very excited for this one. It is out in June. I'll link all the books down below where I can. Then we have The Ophelia Girls by Jane Healy. Now, I didn't get to talk about Jane Healy's debut, The Animals of Lockwood Manor, enough, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I was one of the judges on the HWA debut crown prize last year. It was our winner, but I couldn't talk about the long list or the short list or the winner, really, because um, it just felt not quite right. And I'm kind of sad about that because I would have loved to talk about all of them. Um, and in particular, obviously, our winner. Um, this looks like it's going to be the same kind of brilliant historical fiction um, in the fact that it's set in a big old country house like the animals of Lockwood Manor was. It's set in initially in the 70s where a group of friends kind of obsessed with um, the pre-Raphaelite painters and they even act out things like the death of Ophelia and then a real tragedy happens and then we go all the way into the future and catch up with one of those women as she has to go back to the past. Sounds like my kind of thing and the first one was so yeah I think this is going to be brill. As I do, She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. And this um, reimagines uh, China in the 1300s, I think. Yes, 1300s, uh, where it isn't a son that becomes emperor, but a daughter. And I think this is going to be absolutely corking. That's all I needed to know. And I was like, right, I'm going to get to this straight away. Now, the next book has been a real presence. Um, goodness. The next book has been a real pleasant surprise because uh, this came unsolicited. It's Featherweight by Mick Kitson and this is out in May. Oh, I should have said actually, oopsie. The Ophelia Girls is out in July 2021 and also um, so is uh, She Who Became the Sun. Um, so yeah, looking forward to those. So where was I? I confused myself with all those dates. Oh yes, Featherweight by Mick Kitson. Now this is all about a young woman called Annie Perry who's from a Romani family in the black country in England which is uh, around the Midlands and she when she's eight she's sold into the household of Bill Perry who is the infamous Tipton slasher this heavyweight boxer now as soon as I heard that I was like what because the Tipton slasher Bill Perry is my mum's husband my stepdad's great great grandfather and I was like wow that is amazing so instantly I got like and I'm getting it all again sort of like the hairs on uh, the back of my neck and everything all stood on end because I was like oh and somebody walked over my grave so I'm really really keen to get to this one very soon and um, this is out in May but yeah I'm really really excited for it and uh, yeah looking forward to that one it's just given me a little bit of a thrill and I don't quite know why because technically he's not one of my relations but now I feel like he is and I shall own him making that all about me now <laughs> on to uh, this proof from the lovely folk at Dialogue Books and as you'll know I love Dialogue Books. This is The Giant Dark by um, Sarvat Hassin and I've heard amazing things about this from Kieran Millwood Hargreave and um, she's been raving about this and this is a retelling of the Orpheus and Eurydice myth, quite a loose retelling but still a retelling um, about uh, Ada who is a rock star and it's about, I think, how she disappears away with like an ex-lover or something and how there's a mystery all around that. The fact that it's a Greek myth retelling loosely, I was like, mm -hmm, I need to get to that because I'm bang into them again, even though I wasn't for quite a long time. You try having a mother who teaches classics at your school, you do really well. And then the bullying you get for that, 
unbelievable. So speaking of my mother, I think that she would really, really like this too. Why do publishers do this? I've got Foxfires by Will Menner. Menmer? I think I've said it wrong. I didn't read the many. It's on my shelves and I should do it at some point. But um, this advanced reader's copy, I mean, how am I meant to make that look good on Instagram? I mean, I know that's a really influencer thing to say and I feel quite sick saying it, but it's a fact. Also, I find faces on books don't help. But anyway, um, so this is about... Um, a, a young girl who is lost in a place called O, and there's autumn. How do you say automatons, automatons, them? And I think it's just a, a kind of dystopic, futurey kind of book. Wow, didn't I just do that book so much of a service? Anyway, uh, I really want to read The Many, and then I think, depending on how I get on with that, I will then head to Foxfires, because people love The Many when they read it. But yeah, that really, really bothers me. And then we have a memoir called Gargoyles by Harriet Mercer. I have to say, I'm not a big fan of this cover, because it looks like really bad clip art. But... I'm intrigued by the book, but also slightly worried that this book might be slightly too close to the bone for me, because this is Harriet's memoir of finding out just before her 40th birthday, and I'm heading into my 39th year next year, that she had a serious illness. Now, I have a chronic condition, and as I was talking about in a previous video, I don't really read that much around chronic illnesses or sickness because it's still something that I'm coming to terms with, even though I was diagnosed like five, six years ago. So it's basically denial, really. Anyway, this is um, her memoir and I am intrigued for it. Um, but yeah, I, I have to say that cover, I don't think does anything for me. Actually, speaking of covers, and I feel bad naming and shaming this book, but this arrived the other week and I thought it's possibly the worst proof cover I've ever seen in my life. I thought it was a kind of joke and then actually I found out that that's what the real book's going to look like. I just, it's clip arty. I know we're in a pandemic, but I'm sure there's art departments still running and graphic artists who are desperate to do some fabulous work. But this cover, shocking. I can now finally get rid of that one because I've been meaning to mention it for ages. Anyway, I'd be lying if I said that when a book that I know nothing about, the proof and whether it ends up on my shelves or not is a massive factor because it is. Anyway, um, I recently did a video talking about my favourite female authors and the winner of all of the 16 long-listed books for the Women's Prize has been contacted, but just in case you've missed it and you're watching it now, uh, pages and stages, it's you. Email me. I asked for recommendations of your favourite female authors and lots of you told me about Joan Didion and then this spookily arrived in the post. This is let me tell you what I mean and uh, this is her latest collection. I've not read her before but I've heard fascinating and amazing things and so this is going to be my in I think unless in the comments down below you're like no 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 head to another one first don't go to this one go to something else and then I will. Now this book arrived at Unsolicited I love the wallpaper shenanigans going on here that instantly drew me in. And then on the back, it says, when a young Muslim woman goes missing, a family's dark entanglement with Britain's imperial legacy comes to light in this evocative page turner for readers of Maggie O'Farrell. I was instantly sold by Ceremony of Innocence by Madeline Bunting from that moment. And I shall be getting to this in due course. This is out in July. Um, I saw this next author talk and she was brilliant. Um, her name is Emily Itami, and this is uh, Fault Lines, which is all about a housewife in Japan who um, is is going through life and well, surviving, but in a sort of privileged position. But yet at the same time, I think this looks at how you can be privileged, but still have awful things going on for you because of society, etc. And it's about an affair. I think she embarks on this is out in May. But when I heard um, Emily talk about this, it just sounded so fascinating. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really keen to get to this one. And it's quite short. This would actually possibly work as um, a novella for spring book hibernation, which I'll link the video down to where me, my mum and Tom of Tom Reads Things announce all of the prompts, the dates and everything, because we'd love you to join in. Um, I asked for these two books from the folk at Picador. Um, first is Brown Baby, a memoir of race, family and home by Nikesh Shukla. Um, I really, really wanted to join the Candid uh, Book Club um, and the fabulous ladies who run it to Anne Nikesh when he was talking about this, but it didn't quite arrive in time. So I'm, I'm hoping to do their next one though, because they're reading the same book that Melanie and I are reading for our book club, which is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. So there we go. Anyway, yeah, um, I really, really want to get to this one in due course. As I do, this sounds incredible. Saint X um, by Alexis Shapkin. Um, and Ian Kimbraithwood absolutely loves this. And this was sold to me now. It was sold to me as a merge of two thrillers that I really, really loved. Is it going to say who it is on the cover? No. 
but that's going to be really annoying. That's not really helpful to you, but I am planning on reading this one quite soon. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to tell you more then. But I think it's a thriller that kind of um, turns everything on its head. So I would look and read it now, but that would take me away from it all. As would, like this, I haven't um, even um, looked into what it's about. I just know that I want to read it from the proof because the proof is so beautiful. Quite the opposite of what we were talking about earlier. But this is The Internal Riddle of Thomas Peach um, by Jess Treadwell. And then what's really, really intriguing about this is when you look at Ch Jazz Treadwell and it says a phantom, a cipher, a mere name assumed like a mask and signifying nothing at all. So it's like a really um, mysterious book, full stop. So it's set in the 1780s. It's about Thomas Peach and um, his, well, the infernal riddle of him really and the infernal riddle of who the author is. So um, that was all I needed to be intrigued for this one. And I would like to read this over the summer. It's out in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. I can't do if I see the months in order, unless it's January, February or March or possibly April. I'm absolutely screwed. Um, so yeah, this is now in August. Then the lovely folk at Scribe uh, sent me Fathoms, The World in the Whale by Rebecca Giggs, which I asked for, and I'm really, really thrilled they sent me this. This is up for the Stella Prize in Australia. Um, it is all about the world of whales, how uh, they are being affected by global warming, what the future might be for them, but also how they operate as in groups. And just, I'm fascinated by whales. I have a relationship that's a bit weird with the sea where I I think it's beautiful and stunning and I love uh, documentaries on it and I love like shark movies but I hate swimming in it and I don't like being on a boat when I know that the water's really deep because I think there might be a monster underneath so I'm hoping that this will help uh, so yeah looking forward to getting to that one so thank you scribe and then before I talk about some books from myself some books from myself yes because I bought them for myself I have some books that I've already mentioned on the channel but have arrived in their finished final editions. The first of which is The Book of Difficult Fruit, which I talked about very recently by Kate Lebo, and Chris has already stolen the proof off me. This is an A to Z of Difficult Fruit, their history, the medicines they've been involved in, has recipes and stuff in it. So I think this is going to be a real treat. Um, I was really intrigued by this because there is, well, it mentioned in the proof, a tree called the medlar tree, and the medlar fruit is also known as dog's anus. And I actually bought Chris one of those for Christmas because he really, really wanted one. So, there we go. I'm very excited for, and this is what's brilliant actually about the finished copies arriving because it'll sometimes remind me that I have the proof on my shelves and I should have got to it sooner. That's very much the case with Cold Boy's Wood by Carol Birch, which is both a murder mystery and a ghost story from what I can gather. So a body is found in a river, there is then talk of murder at the pub, um, and yet also we start to meet people outside around where this happened, including I think a girl who is haunted often, um, but likes to go into the woods to be with ghosts. So hmm, I'm really, really, really intrigued with this one. Very excited for King of Rabbits by Carla Nebler. This is one of my most anticipated books. This looks at rural poverty, and lives of working class people, like, well, in this case, in Somerset. And I don't think that's talked about enough. We often focus on working class or poverty tales in cities, but not necessarily so much in uh, in the, uh, I can say in the wilds, but just in the countryside. Then we have the, and this is so beautiful. So I am really keen to read this anyway, and I love the proof, but the final copy of Emma Stonex and Light Lighters is incredible, especially when, I mean, look at that. They've done amazing things with this. Um, and this is all about a mystery of what happened to three lighthouse keepers one night where they all just disappear. And that's all I know. It's all I need to know. It's very high on my TBR. Very excited for it. As I am, An Ordinary Wonder by Buki Papillon, which was meant to come out last autumn, but has been moved back because of everything to um, now. And this is about twins in Nigeria, one of whom is intersex. All I need to know to know that I really, really want to read it and I think I will probably love it. I was kind of thinking that one would be on the Women's Prize possibly, but that might be the last time I talked about it in my Women's Prize prediction video. If you want to see my thoughts on the Women's Prize, I'll link the video that I did with my mum, the live, down below too. Now onto books that I got myself. First of all, this print run, which is, sorry, this limited print run of Mother by Jess Phillips. I bought me and my mother a copy of this and this is gorgeous. I read it literally in like a couple of hours and it's her story of her mother, how she feels being a mother. It's a book for people who don't have stereotypical mothers or mothers at all or, or missing their mums. It's just gorgeous. It's by The Pound Project and I will link them down below because they seem to do these like incredible short books 
um, that have, they've got like an amazing list of people who've written them before and I think they might be at some point publishing backlists of them so yeah keep your eyes up peel for those I bought myself blueberries by um Elena Savage good surname but it's spelt wrong honestly I say that about any time I see Savage I'm like spelt wrong this I wasn't sure about and I'd heard about it here there and everywhere it's on the Stella Prize long list um in Australia and um the reason I was pulled into it was when somebody described it as not just being like snippets of memoir but there's also true crime in here and I was like <gasps> Okay, I need to read that book. Um, and so I'm going to read this very soon, hopefully, because I think it's going to be a corker. Um, Matthew Sharapa recommended Likes by Sarah Shunlin Bynum, um, a short story collection that he absolutely loved. I thought the cover looked stunning. Matthew always recommends great books. And so, yep, yeah, I ordered myself one from America and it finally got here. I am waiting for Butter Honey. Is it Butter Honey something pig? I can't remember what it's called that I ordered from Canada, and I think it must have got lost in the post because it seems to have taken about 75 years. I feel like I ordered it 75 years ago. I don't know, maybe that's got lost or maybe the postage is very, very slow because of the thing we don't speak of. I got myself this collection, um, anti I can never say this, Antiemetic for Homesickness by Romelin Anti. This is a poetry collection that is on the Dylan Thomas um, prize long list. I think it's also on the Jalak prize long list as well. I really want to get to these poems. I'm very excited for them. I love this cover and you may have seen this in the video where I tried to match my um, reading to my glasses but also uh, got lots of you to pick my books but in this case uh, Oscar didn't pick this one but I still desperately want to get to it so I'll read that soon. Speaking of poetry, also I haven't actually started this which 15 months, 15 months? What am I talking about? 15 days um, into the month that it starts in, isn't it a great sign? This is a poem for every spring day, edited by Ali Ziri. As I say, the title always slightly winds me up because it's actually two poems every day. Um, so technically I've got 30 to catch up on if I sit down with this now, which I probably won't do. I'm gonna slowly catch up and then read two a day uh, for the rest of spring, but I love this series, it's great. And then last but not least, Four books, I mentioned the Women's Prize long as before, but I didn't have four of them, so I bought myself them because the Women's Prize said, Simon, we will send you a set. And I was like, no, I'd rather buy the four that I don't have and then give away a set to one of you, which like I said, pages and stages get in touch with me because then I will get them to send you it. Um, first up is Dawn French's Because of You. Very excited for this one. I was a little bit shocked to see this on the long list at first, but now just very, very intrigued. And this is gonna be um, my read for the Pick a Funny Book prompt for Spring Book Hibernation. Like I said, that video introducing that will be down below. So we have that one. Then we have um, Pyronessi by Susanna Clark, which I'm currently reading at the moment. Uh, the premise is quite out there and doesn't make sense. I'm not sure the book does, but I've still been enthralled by it. But I'll talk to you more about this in my March wrap up part one, which will be on Friday. There is not going to be a February wrap up because it was stressing me out too much. February was not a good month for me mental health wise. I had 21 books that I wanted to talk about. Even if I'd just done the highlights, I still, I don't know. But what's great is I have worked out that all of the books in it, apart from three, which I'm just going to bin off and let's not talk about, um, I um, can fit into other videos. So you will get to see them at some point. And I probably even will mention a few actually in that wrap up on Friday. And ultimately we have Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Everyone's saying this is absolutely amazing. I think it's about a man who transitions uh, to become a trans woman and then transitions back and gets their boss pregnant. And it's about found families, queer families, and all those brilliant things. And actually, I have got a copy of this, but I really wanted a finished edition because I love the cover. I mean, I'm not even sure this is going to be a very me book because I know it's apparently Vignetti, which I do really, really like, but also it's a book about social media. And I don't know how I feel about books about social media uh, sometimes, even though I'm on it all the time. Maybe that's what the problem is, actually, possibly. Anyway, it's No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. Actually, speaking about books on uh, that kind of deal with living online and social media and stuff, CJ Reads has done a brilliant video recommending some books of that uh, genre. If you'd like to find out more, I'll link that down below. And um, because it certainly made me want to read this more than I thought I did. Um, and actually, CJ, I'm blaming you for me then buying the finished edition, not even knowing if I'm going to like it when I've got the proof 
on a book trolley behind me. So um, yeah, there we go. There are all the books that I was sent, well, apart from the gifts that I got from my wish list, which I'll talk about later, um, in the first half of March. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Thank you for all your lovely comments on videos recently. I know I've been making more than normal. It will start to peter out and calm down a little bit in the coming weeks. And I'm actually gonna be pre-recording quite a lot, not quite a lot, a normal amount of videos for um, when I'm planning on having a week and a half off everything so uh, yeah that'll be coming up soon too speaking of social media and uh, coming off it anyway uh yeah i hope all is well with you all and i'll speak to you all soon bye oh and before i forget if you've read any of these and you don't like them don't tell me now when i've read them you can tell me all your thoughts and everything but at the moment i'm super duper excited about them so and i want to keep it that way so uh, on that note i really will go now i'll speak to you all soon bye